This is not the secret, you know? Right. This isn't about yes. the, the law of f***ing attraction. Where I got my work ethic from, when you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, if I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does, you know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy that that valedictorian studied for an hour, and you know I caught you, I caught you, and I am dumb, but I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Goggins got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty, and then three months later, they were full. Having a discipline every day to say, for me to learn this one math problem, it's gonna take me 10 hours. And you realize through hard work, you can outwork anybody, no matter how badass they are. But that's the part people don't want to dive into. One of the guys I was in training with came down to visit me. He was amazed at how I kept the same routine I had 20 years ago. Waking up early, going to the gym, getting after it, going back in the afternoon. So he started asking me, how the hell do you fucking do this shit every fucking day? I said, I don't fucking negotiate with myself. Most of us come out here, we explain away why we can't do shit, and we stick in this negotiation process in our mind. You can't negotiate these things. They're definite. Stay hard. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. What gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence is not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are gonna watch this. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care if I sit and start stuttering again. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe I overcome them every day, but facing them and facing them and facing them pretty soon like this. You know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, they want an easier answer. There has to be an easier way. It's not. I'm sorry. I searched for it my entire life. <laughs> and getting up early, I don't want to do that. Some of this long list of things I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I'm like, you guys aren't doing this shit in high school. You guys aren't getting up at five o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than the average human being. I was like, hang on a second. I have something they don't have. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. When you push real hard, you have this door in your mind. A lot of us don't want to open that door. Once you open that door, you're in a tunnel. It's a dark ass tunnel and you can't see shit. But there's one thing about being in dark places. If you have the courage to stay in there long enough, your eyes will start to adjust to the darkness. Your body and mind will always adjust to more suffering, to more pain. If you want to push harder, know this. Your mind quits way before your body does. So you have to be willing to go way into that darkness and find more of yourself. Stay hard. I always equated working out to struggle. And I struggled my whole life, but I ran from it. So I started realizing, man, I gotta start facing the struggle and I gotta be mentally strong for the struggle. So that's why I started coming up with like, I, I'm training for life. And if you look at life as it is a trial ground, a testing ground, where you need to go, suffering is a fact of life. I'm being like depressed, I go through depressed moments, I go, oh, hang on, I'm getting, I'm getting tested. If you feel bad, you're being tested. How are you going to perform under that? And that's suffering is a part of life. Yeah, look, very needed. So another year has come and gone, and a lot of us are in the same fucking place we were last year. What the fuck are you waiting on? We sleep one third of our fucking lives, and we think we can take fucking days off. We think we have the right to sit back and give ourselves fucking options on which way we're gonna go in life. Am I gonna run today? Am I gonna work out today? Well, it's Christmas. It's New Year's. 
It's my birthday. Do you think time gives a fuck that it's Christmas, that it's New Year's, that it's your birthday? You give yourself too many fucking options. Let me tell you one thing. Time is running out. You keep on sitting around wondering what the fuck you want to do. You're just gonna run out of time. So make sure you do one thing. Stop following the fucking crowd. They may take time off, but you can't afford to. Stay hard. You put a sword in the fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that. Mu- I, I, I said, okay, we, we, we can't quit. We got to figure out why you are this pussy. Why are you this pussy, man? What is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire. And I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissected it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must put it in the fucking freezer and freeze the fuck out of it. And then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the fucking freezer. Open the door. And he said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating the shit out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. This is all about the quitting mind. So what's the quitting mind? Let's say it's day one of a job interview. We all know what that fucking shit feels like. You have your clothes laid out. You got your fucking food ready to go in the morning. You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. You get the fucking job. Merry fucking Christmas. After a couple months, you start showing up to work a little later. You don't look as good. Your clothes aren't fucking laid out. Your breakfast isn't ready. Your mind's getting softer. We do that shit with everything in life. When New Year's coming up, guess what? Don't have a fucking quitting mind. Repetition every day. Stay hard. Is that through this, through through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition of the same thing that you don't want to do? And that's the, and that's the key thing. Through repetition of things you don't want to do, you develop mental armor for your mind. You start to armor your mind. Because your mind's like, okay, we suffer. We suffer every day. It's what we do. We do stuff that sucks every day. So then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. And that's how it started coming up. You know, I just started being very uncomfortable. And now it's like just a way of life. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. So I broke the Guinness Book of World's record for pull-ups a long time ago, but I failed at it twice. And I did 67,000 (laughs) pull-ups in trying to break this record. So to do 4,030 pull-ups, I had to do 67,000 for training for that. Wow. And so what I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of me, callousing my mind through pain and suffering. My voice got me into comfort a lot, but I had this other voice I heard my whole life saying, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? No, man, we got to go over here to that rock pile over in the fucking corner where nobody's at. That's where victory's at. We're over there in that corner. I had this crazy voice in my head saying, over there is where the fucking answers are. And I didn't want to listen to it because over there was pain. Over there was me looking in the mirror. Over there was me being accountable for all these things I went through my life. Even though people put them on me, it's now mine to own. And I didn't want to go over there by myself, but I had to, and this voice was guiding me there. This race is found in every first step you take, every grasp of that fucking iron bar. All that shit, all the miles in the pool. Inspiration's found in suffering. Stay hard. Without friction, there is no growth. 
Without friction, there's no growth. I was 290 pounds twice in my life. I do not like to do the things I do, but there's humongous satisfaction from doing it. There's humongous satisfaction from lacing your shoes up saying, I don't really want to go for a run today. And then running. And then yeah. getting back and saying, wow. I did it. I did it. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about these small steps to doing things you don't want to do. So every day I have my shoes laid out because I hate running. People don't believe it. Fuck you. I hate it. <laughs> so that's what happens. Every day I wake up out of my fucking bed and there's my shoes. My shirt, my shorts. And some days I fucking wake up and I just look at the motherfuckers for hours. And then I start walking around the fucking house. And I say, I ain't fucking running today. I'm not doing shit today. Nothing. I don't have to. I fucking did all that shit. I need all this shit. I went through all this hell weeks and fucking got my ass kicked all the time and fucking made it. What am I doing this shit for? And that's when I think. I got 2.3 million followers on Instagram. This ain't about you anymore, motherfucker. This ain't about your fucking ranger schools and getting beat as a kid and shit. You have an obligation, not to yourself, but to everybody out there that is touched by what you do as a human being. While nobody knows what I'm doing, no one is videoing me and shit. I am a virtual trainer mentally. Because there's a lot of people out there saying, man, David Goggins is fucking getting after it today. And if I wake up one morning and don't fucking do that, I go back to that David Goggins who lied about being who he wanted to be. So my thing that keeps me going every day is my mission in life. While I did not choose it. I'm an introvert and I fucking hate what we're doing even right now is to always stay the fucking course. You man the fuck up every fucking day of your life because you know exactly what it is to not man up. I've done that too many times in my life. So that's what keeps me going because I know that's the only place where growth happens. When you quit, your mind does this. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, when you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, fuck you, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, fuck, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this fucking thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to have, they have to work, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. But you can't engage it by sitting back in these nice chairs, drinking this nice water, talking to you, talking about what I want to do. That's where, so that's where the 40% thing comes in. It comes in when you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not going to quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to. But then it becomes used to it in your brain is the most powerful weapon. I talk about that in one of these chapters. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that shit we have nowadays, yeah, that's great. We're up to date, you, you know, you, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, when you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that shit, man. You're alone. You're alone, you may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in a day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you, pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain, and your brain controls you, you're fucked. You gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. Your heroes will let you down. Whoever your hero is, they're gonna let you down. Trust me, they will. We're human beings. Yeah. And you cannot be them. You're not them. Mm -hmm. You gotta find your best self. And in doing that, stop reading books about other people. Stop doing this about other people. Spend time with yourself. Spend time with yourself. Be, create your own super being. Yeah. Create your own Rocky. Create your own Rambo. Create your own superhero. And what that means is, I'm my own role model. Because when I'm fucked up, I look in the mirror and say, you're fucked up. And we got to fix this now. Self-discipline is everything. Because I know you're capable of more. It's not discipline so much for me. 
It's all on you. It's all on you. The self part is what's big. We count on people too much to get us through shit. And we look to our right, we look to our left, we're looking for help. And if you can build that self, you can build that total accountability in oneself. And it's not about being selfish. I'm trying to create a better me. I want you to see how fucking far you can go. And that's all it's about, yourself. I started doing <clears throat> seal training with stress fractures. Stress fractures, that's not shin finish. splints. That's hard to finish. Stress <laughs> fractures. Starting the hardest training, the hardest training in the world with stress fractures. Every morning I wake up at 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, go to my dive cage, go in there before anybody saw me, I get duct tape, and I would tape from my forefoot all the way up to the middle of my calf, and I would put two black socks on. And so I ran not using the pivot. And I ran my hip flexors. So for the first 45 minutes to an hour, I was in absolute excruciating pain. But what motivated me? through that whole process was the fact that this kid came from that. I'm in the hardest training in the world, in the worst shape of my entire life. What if I can graduate amongst these studs? Wow. All these guys around me are studs. They're stallions, they're gladiators in my class. They're all healthy, most of them. They're not broken like this. But if I can graduate, it would change everything for me. If I can start the hardest train in the world, broken, and graduate. So my mind fed off of that. You are now, from the weakest man, you are now the hardest man to ever live. If you can do this, life is one big mind game, and you're playing it with yourself. Is it true? I don't care. It got me through the hardest training, starting out broken. When most people quit, I had just started. And when you take that mindset and you learn to flip that around, that's what made me powerful. And my body followed. And three months later, my stress fractures were healed by running on them. It's calcifying it, just like. I never had them since. I'm 43 years old. Wow. I ran 7,000 miles in 2007. Haven't had a stress fracture since. And you didn't. And you don't give yourself a way out. The only way out for me at that time was death. I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. Or I'm going to die. Or I'm going to die trying. Period. And my body said, Roger that. We're going to get you through this. Oh.